Strangers rushed to help after they found a nine month old baby alone in the middle of a street. You call 911? Yeah. Call then a woman can be heard calling for the child. That's my baby, that's my baby, that's my baby, that's my baby. Oh my God, oh my God. Utica police say after they were alerted to the video, they arrested the child's mother, Ladrika Ford, for child endangerment. My body, my choice, I would have picked this song to play during my abortion. It goes like this. <laughs> The truth is, I, I would have killed the kid anyway. <laughs> you know, I'd be a terrible mother. I mean, I can take care of nothing. And, you know, I really hope I wouldn't be the kind of mother that would leave my kid in the back of the car. But for sure, I would leave him on the top of the car with my coffee. <laughs> I've got a really funny joke for you. I'm going to take a little puppy and I'm going to put him on a sandwich. And then I'm going to eat that sandwich. And that little puppy is going to die. And it's going to be so, so funny. I'm just so funny like that. I just come up with like the funniest, edgiest jokes like that. Like that is just so, so hilarious. <laughs> so obviously that's not, ooh. So obviously that's not funny at all because puppies are really cute. And the idea behind this is that if you were to eat a puppy, it would be kind of just like upsetting. Like I feel kind of upset that I even said that. I feel like in the media right now, there is just so much like woke, abortionists and they're just tr trying to be so vile and I don't know where the idea of the grosser you are the more people are going to like you came from but I don't know if it's working because I mean for anyone with two brain cells I feel like making jokes about killing babies is really not funny <laughs> it's really just a heavy topic I was at work yesterday and I was like talking to my coworker about this video I found on Instagram and it was basically just these four little babies. They're quadruplets and one of them was pretending to fall down and the other ones were like laughing at it. And I just thought it was super cute. So I was just telling my coworker about it and then we got on the topic of like, oh wow, imagine having quadruplets. And she and another coworker were like, oh yeah, I would 100% get three abortions and leave one baby or something like that. And they were like making jokes out of it. Like, oh, I just let the doctor go at it and see how many he can get. And I just feel like I wish I had spoken up and been like, hey, it's not cool to say stuff like that for obvious reasons. It's just gross. And I didn't say anything. I was just like silent. Like, I feel like if they were paying any attention, they could tell that I was kind of like not cool with the joke. But I didn't actually like put my opinion to words. I kind of was just like, Ugh. recently I've been just convicted to have a voice and to have like a political voice, having a voice that is just God-centered and not having a voice that reflects the world. For me, a lot of the things I'm recently struggling with is just like language things, like talking in a way that's not pleasant or well-flavored. And I do work in a restaurant. It's not an excuse, but I'm around a lot of swearing. And for some reason, I just, I've always kind of been like a potty mouth kind of person. Like my family doesn't swear. I guess my extended family does, but like my family doesn't swear. I don't watch like so many shows where there's swearing. I just kind of just have done it ever since I started working at restaurants. And I think I really just need to break that habit. I just feel like there's not a lot of respect for people that swear. And it's not that they're consciously disrespected, but I feel like among the, the women that I work with that don't swear and are pretty like self-controlled, I can definitely tell there's a lot more respect for that than people like me that will like sometimes slip out a swear word. And so the idea is that we can just do nothing but good by doing what the Bible says. And I know it never really says in the Bible, no swearing, 
but there are verses that clearly indicate that swearing is just not for Christians. So this is the one that I think most people would think of, but it says, obscene and foolish talk or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. And so really every time that I swear or want to swear, I should correct it or just not do it in the first place. And then just like say something like, oh, I'm just so grateful for my job. I'm so grateful for my coworkers. Just do the opposite of what Satan is trying to get you to do. I think that's the best way to break a habit is to replace it. And that's literally kind of what this Bible verse is suggesting is that you stop doing that thing, but also just replace it with giving thanks. And so for me, that's what my 2024 kind of late New Year's resolution is. <laughs> and I think if we are able to control our speech, then we are doing God a great service. We're doing ourselves a great service. We'll do, we're doing everyone a great service. Just, just being a positive and controlled individual. The best book that I read by R.T. Keller was called Taming the Tongue or Controlling the Tongue. And it was about like how your speech is so important. Our words have the power of life and death in them. It's so like important to just be very mindful of what we say. If we could just go a whole day without speaking, we would we would have that reflection of, I talk a lot during the day, there's a lot that I say. Are the things that I'm saying honorable? And I'm getting off topic, but I was, I think our speech is so valuable and holding back things is wrong. Like we have a platform every day to speak on and if we're just using it to continue to push along the secular way instead of standing against the current are you really being valuable to the kingdom of god and i think that's a really hard question for me to ask myself because i really like to get on with people i like to make people laugh i like to laugh with people we can you can like work things into your speech that are biblical without feeling like you're like preaching to people. I feel like for me personally, I'm also becoming more invested in a lot of my own growth. You either choose to grow in the right way or the wrong way. And I have decided recently just like, there's no more. There's no more of just wanting to do things because they feel good and kind of letting things slide. I want to be that person that goes against the flow and I also want to be comfortable doing it. And I think it's so hard to do things, especially if you think people may not like you for it. But I think that there's so much grace given to us in these situations where perhaps we are not the most liked person in the room and we are against the flow of traffic with the thinking and the beliefs of the day. I don't want people to not like me for my beliefs, but everybody has beliefs. Everyone has to, in the end, choose to be fake or real they have to choose reality or choose to hide and if you're choosing to hide then people aren't really friends with the real you they're friends with someone that is trying to come across as a people pleaser and if you do struggle with people pleasing then it takes time to break out of that but it is so freeing to not have to protect yourself by hiding from people and especially on the topic of being pro-life I found this Bible verse today from Proverbs 31, 8. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. I know that the unborn cannot speak from the womb, they cannot vote, but we have to be the voices of these, these, these little children in the womb who are being killed. And whether or not we are going to ruin our social lives <laughs> by trying to just stick to our beliefs, we do have to realize we are choosing a different reality if we are not being truthful to what our hearts are telling us. And for us to say, hey, like, I totally am pro-life, but I just don't feel like it's appropriate to bring that up at work. That is in part true. You do not have to bring up political debates, especially in a professional setting where there may be regulations about that. But if you have friends, family, and you're able to peaceably talk about these topics, then totally go for it. It is, of course, a priority to keep peace, especially 
when there are those conversations where you may get a little irked, <laughs> but um, we can lovingly communicate to people and even if we disagree, we can make them feel heard and make them feel like there is love even if there is disagreement. A lot of our generation just thinks when there's disagreement, there's no chance for a relationship and commitment or anything of that nature, but you totally can have a friendship with someone if they don't agree with you. And it's biblical that we are going out into the world. We're not of the world, but we are in the world. And we need to be able to touch people's lives where we can. I guess an example of giving your opinion and standing by your opinion would be starting where that conversation was. You know, I wasn't going into that conversation at work trying to make a pro-life argument. I was just saying these little babies, they're so cute. They're like so self-entertained. And it turned into, oh, I would kill those babies on the, the secular side. That was the automatic response. And what I wish I had said was, I can't imagine those little babies growing up without each other. They were just made to be together from the start and their lives are very valuable. And if there are maybe medical reasons that the mother wouldn't be able to carry to term, that's one thing, but life is so valuable. And these four babies are perfectly healthy. It, there's no reason to think that the mother died from giving birth to them. The, the point is that life is valuable, whether it's puppies, kitties, babies, the environment, life is valuable. God values life and he wants us to value life and protect life, especially because we are alive in a world that is dead to sin. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Knowing what God's heart is for and knowing how to argue it are very important, not for the end of winning arguments, but for the end of representing God. We need to just give God the glory in our bodies. And that includes our speech. It includes our motion and how we train our bodies, how we train ourselves, how we love others. We need to be what God intended us to be and represent his kingdom. Please go and watch some of the videos that I linked below. Please go and watch some videos in which you can gather more knowledge about the pro-life and pro-choice debate, especially from the Christian perspective, so that you can lovingly argue for life as God designed it. You don't want to have anyone doubt that you were a Christian in the day that you pass away. You don't want any of your coworkers to be like, wow, I never knew she was a Christian. Let that never be said of you. And to do that, we just need to work on growing our ability to communicate in a world where there's so much misinformation. Social media just does not portray things the right way. There's a lot of propaganda, false information, and knowing the wisdom, the truth is so important. And that is my opinion on babies in the womb. Perhaps one day they will use their bodies to honor God the way that we are using our bodies to honor God. Let us let the world know what we believe and what we think. Thank you for listening to me through this controversial topic. I understand that you may not agree with me, but I really encourage you to watch these videos below and maybe you will change your mind a little bit as I have grown a lot more pro-life in getting more information on abortion and what all of that entails. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching this video. Please go and watch some of my other videos. Please like and subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye.